Welcome back to Movie Rewind. Today I will tell you about an action, adventure, thriller movie from 1996 titled The Rock. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. Brigadier General Frank Hummel, stands in the rain, overlooking his late wife Barbara's grave. He says that he needs to do something that most people will frown upon, and he hopes she understands why he had to do it. He tells her that he misses her dearly and places his Medal of Honor on the headstone. That night, Frank leads a team of former Spec Ops Marines on a raid of a U.S. weapons depot. They confiscate a supply of rockets armed with a highly volatile nerve agent called VX gas. One of their men is lost in the process, after dropping one of the canisters and releasing the airborne toxin. Frank and his second-in-command, Major Tom Baxter, have no choice but to seal the room with the soldiers still inside. They can only watch in horror as he suffers chemical burns before seizing violently and choking to death. Meanwhile, in Washington, D.C., Dr. Stanley Goodspeed is in an FBI safe room inspecting a suspicious package sent to a Bosnian refugee camp. With his trainee Marv, they open the crate to find a tiny doll inside. The doll begins filling the space with sarin gas, and it contains a C4 explosive that starts counting down. Stanley works frantically to deactivate the bomb, ignoring direction to inject himself in the heart with a dose of atropine. Just seconds remain when he successfully disarms the device. Stanley returns home to unwind until his girlfriend Carla arrives. He tells her about his near-death experience then goes into a short rant describing the evils of the world and how he can't possibly imagine having children right now. Carla then breaks the news that she is pregnant. After realizing that she isn't joking, Stanley tells her that he's happy and they also agree to finally get married. Back in San Francisco, Frank is joined by several Marines who previously served under his leadership. Major Baxter, who he served with in Vietnam, Captain Hendricks, who fought alongside him in the Gulf War, and Captains Fry and Darrow, who organized the raid on the weapons depot. They take over Alcatraz Island, and hold 81 tourists hostage using the existing prison cells. Frank then contacts Washington and makes his demands. $100 million transferred within 48 hours, or the VX rockets will be detonated over the city of San Francisco. The funds will be distributed as reparations, to the families of the Marines who died while conducting Black Ops missions under his leadership. Meanwhile, Stanley is busy consummating his engagement, when he receives a phone call telling him to report to San Francisco. He tells Carla to accompany him, assuming it is only a training exercise, and says they can get married afterwards. Upon arriving in San Francisco, Stanley is met and briefed by FBI Director Womack. SEAL Commander Anderson is preparing to lead an incursion team to Alcatraz in order to recover the weapons and free the hostages. Given the stakes, Womack is compelled to consult long-term federal prisoner John Mason, the only former inmate of Alcatraz to successfully escape. Mason and Womack have an adversarial history with one another, so Stanley is assigned to meet with him and secure his assistance. Mason agrees to cooperate, but Womack rips up his pardon soon after he signs it. John's agreement calls for a brief stay in a premium suite at San Francisco's Fairmont Hotel. He orders a lavish spread to keep the agents busy as he receives a haircut out on the balcony. While shaking on the deal with Womack, John slips a rope over his wrist and uses it to suspend him off the balcony. The other agents rush out to assist and John uses the distraction to escape. He steals a Humvee from the hotel valet and drives recklessly through San Francisco, colliding with other vehicles and derailing a streetcar. He eventually stops at the Palace of Fine Arts where he has arranged to meet with his daughter Jade. John makes a bit of progress with her, Jade still being upset after abruptly losing both parents. She is startled when a convoy of law enforcement vehicles arrive, but Stanley shows up and says that John is assisting the FBI with an important matter. Back at headquarters, Stanley briefs the team on how to handle the VX warheads. It's then that he is notified he'll be joining the incursion team, despite his lack of combat training, prompting him to run to the bathroom and vomit. The SEAL team breaches the facility via an underwater tunnel and enters the prison's boiler room. John leads them through the tunnels without being detected, however, they trip an alarm that was left in the shower room and are surrounded there by Frank and his men. Frank urges Anderson to have his team stand down, but Anderson refuses and a standoff ensues before a shot is fired prematurely. Gunfire rains down from the balcony and the SEAL team is eliminated, leaving Stanley and John as the only survivors. John is prepared to leave the island until Stanley discloses the full scope of the mission and he realizes that Jade is in danger. Using John's knowledge to navigate the facility, they start the process of locating and disabling each of the 15 rockets, one at a time. 
several rockets are found in the morgue where Stanley begins the laborious process of removing the guidance chip from each unit. The work is slow and exact, as the VX spheres are arranged in delicate strands. Stanley details the effects of VX gas on the body as he takes out the chips. All but three rockets are sabotaged when Captain Hendricks is sent to search the tunnel system. A firefight ensues, and Stanley uses lethal force for the first time in his career. After learning that Hendricks's squad has failed, Frank threatens to execute one of the hostages if he doesn't receive the missing guidance chips. Stanley debates giving up the guidance chips until John takes the chips and destroys them. He then surrenders himself to buy time for Stanley to take out the final three rockets. During a tense confrontation in the prison courtyard, John calls Frank an idiot, while questioning his sense of patriotism. He says that Frank is insulting the memory of his fallen soldiers by threatening innocent civilians. Frank responds by striking John and prepares to shoot him in the head but decides against it. Stanley manages to neutralize the 13th rocket just before he's taken into custody. In the meantime, realizing that the incursion failed, the Pentagon prepares a backup strategy, fighter jets armed with thermite plasma bombs. The thermite plasma would create temperatures high enough to neutralize the toxin, but everyone on the island would be killed in the process. Agent Paxton then approaches Womack, asserting that given the circumstances, he needs to know the details surrounding John's incarceration. Womack agrees, as John simultaneously shares the same story with Stanley. John was a captain for the British SAS, who stole a top-secret microfilm from former FBI director J. Edgar Hoover. The microfilm contained numerous government secrets, and although John was apprehended, he refused to give up the evidence. After being disowned by the British government, he was kept locked up without trial. Womack says that as time lapsed it became impossible to make the incident public, so John remained incarcerated and forgotten about. John, on the other hand, says that they never would have released him even if he surrendered the microfilm. Stanley then asks him how he escaped the cell to begin with, as John uses his homemade contraption to pull the security lever and open the door. After reaching the beach without incident, John again decides to leave the island, asserting that Frank won't launch the missiles. Stanley says that he will complete the mission alone, if necessary, but gets caught before locating another rocket. John returns and saves him, citing that he didn't want to see Stanley's child grow up fatherless, as Jade has. The deadline issued to the Pentagon lapses and Baxter implores Frank to take action. Frank orders a rocket fired, and it heads for Candlestick Park, which is full of fans. At the last possible moment, he reroutes the weapon, causing it to land in the ocean. Frank's colleagues are furious, as Washington will now view them as weak and incapable. He responds that the government called their bluff, and he is a soldier not a murderer, therefore the operation is over. Frank directs them to take some of the hostages and flee, leaving him to bear the consequences, but Fry and Darrow refuse. They view themselves as mercenaries who either receive payment or follow through on their threats. The two sides stand at odds as John and Stanley arrive to see what's transpiring. Shots are then fired, and Frank and Baxter are fatally wounded. John returns fire on the mutineers, driving them away, as Frank uses his last words to tell Stanley the final rocket's location. Stanley heads to the lighthouse while John covers him from the rooftops. As he disarms the last rocket, Darrow converges on him and threatens him with a combat knife. Stanley fires the unguided rocket directly into Darrow's chest, and he plummets to his death. Stanley then turns his attention to the final strand of VX spheres but drops one onto the deck. He recovers it before it shatters and retrieves the final guidance chip, as Fry chases him through the lighthouse. Cornered, Stanley is forced to confront Fry, and uses the chip as a distraction before attacking him. As the plasma armed jets approach, Fry overpowers Stanley and begins choking him. With no other option remaining, Stanley forces the VX sphere into Fry's mouth and strikes him in the jaw, releasing the toxin. Fry begins convulsing and dies almost instantly. Stanley, also exposed to the chemical, stumbles away and injects the atropine into his own heart. He then falls to his knees and ignites two green flares, the predetermined signal that the mission is a success. The flares are spotted only after one of the pilots released his bombs, which explode on the back side of the island and send Stanley into the water. John reappears and carries Stanley back to shore, where he informs Washington that all the hostages are still alive. When asked about John, Stanley reports that John was killed in the blast, allowing him to escape since Womack destroyed his pardon. With a note that reads front pew, John suggests that he and Carla spend their honeymoon in Fort Walton, Kansas. The movie ends with Stanley fleeing from a Fort Walton church. He removes a microfilm from the canister and asks Carla if she wants to know who really shot JFK.
Okay guys, thank you for watching. Please leave a like on the video, and subscribe to see more.